Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the Access Trader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, just crazy market. It's, it's the same thing um, every single day. It, it almost feels like there is uh, kind of a rocket launcher. Once one of these stocks takes off and uh, confirms macro, you know, these stocks really, really take off. And as much as we sit here every single day, and, and again, any, anybody who's been trading for a very, very long time, you know, all these headlines that we're starting to see now, especially in the last three, four days, that would really suggest that, you know what, let's be a little more cautious. You don't need to go really, really aggressive. But the more headlines that pop up, the market continues uh, to really embrace these bad headlines. Again, you, you see now for the last three, four days, uh, a pretty good now. You know, it's not even, it started out a little small, right? But you're starting to get a little pretty good uh, rebound now in COVID cases, uh, not only just in uh, the U.S., but you're seeing, I think they had like 70... What is it, was it 5,000 to 7,500 cases in uh, Saudi Arabia in, in, uh, overnight? Um, please double check those numbers. That's, that's right. I, there's so much data going out throughout the day. Um, but yeah, something like that, like 4,000 to 5,000, 7,000 cases. So we're starting to see that uh, in Florida, uh, in Texas. Uh, but and again, no matter what happens, there's two things that are, are still very, very consistent. Number one, the Fed is the backstop. Okay, I, I think that's the most important part. Whether you agree with it or you don't agree with it, again, at the end of the game, I'm not going to go back into this whole stop blaming things. It's up to you, but it's really up to you. You got to take really, uh, you know, self, uh, you know, self examination to realize that again, there's nobody's fault of what the market is doing. The market is just doing what the market does. Again, its sole purpose is to separate you from your money. So it really doesn't have to give you a reason why the market's doing what it does. So again, take self-responsibility for your actions every single day. But again, if you have that evidence in front of you, and we started talking about the last couple of days, again, until the market really, um, until the market really stops uh, behaving on every single headline of the Fed, the market is going to continue to do what it's doing. And again, case in point, it's amazing that when you see a macro level breakout, no matter what the market does, these stocks are just going absolutely nuts. So for example, Tesla, the big pivot was that 835 level. Everybody right? remembers that 835, the stock is in orbit, literally uh, you know, about one, two days away from going absolutely nuts. Uh, Amazon from that 2550 level, right? 2550, again, is going absolutely nuts. Shop, as soon as it closed over 800, it hasn't had a downtick, right? It had that, it had that whole break. Uh, it took out the 800 level and literally did not have a downtick since then. And this is kind of what we're seeing in the market now over and over. And today's case in point was Roku, right? Roku is obviously uh, the absolute biggest mover of the day. Uh, and again, it's the same case in point. They take out a major range. They have a very big move. They have a consolidation move. And then next thing you know, uh, they go back at it again. So until this theme uh, stops happening, stops working, again, you have to continue to ride this train. Now, again, I say this every single day. At any moment, they could pull the plug. Eventually, these headlines, right, will make the market at least pause and say, well, wait a minute. We, we, we get that the Fed is backstopping. We, we get the, you know, the, the momentum train in the market. But eventually, again, the materialistic news kind of weighs down the hype, weighs down the quote-unquote Robin Hood crowd. And next thing you know, you have a market that's back testing. Again, the last thing we want to do is put ourselves in a position that we have the blinders on and say every single day, it doesn't matter what happens, no matter what happens, these stocks will do what they have to do. That's just not simply the truth. And you're starting seeing that uh, every single day with the down. The last two, three days, the market's kind of moving on up very, very aggressively. And then slowly but surely in the afternoon, it starts rolling over. Now, again, does that mean anything? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But again, you can't be naive to think at no given time, the news does not matter. Again, this COVID thing is a big deal. And New York, I think, is set for, I think, phase two uh, within the next week or so. Okay. And if the, if the numbers come out very, very aggressively, if there's a notable uptick considering nobody is really out of the house, 
then there's a very, very good chance when a major city comes out with a you know, huge uptick, you know, with, you know, whether it's 20, 30, 40,000 people uh, overnight, the market's going to feel it. Okay, don't think it's not. So again, no disrespect to like Arizona or Oklahoma or you know, just uh, you know, one of these other states. But if a New York City, if Chicago, if an LA, and LA got had a you know pretty pretty dramatic up uptick in their COVID cases, something eventually has to give. So uh, please be careful. Eventually, again, this gravy train is going to run out. You know, the breakout that worked yesterday and the day before and a month ago maybe not may not work out tomorrow. So again, it's okay to be aggressive, continue to be aggressive, but please have one eye on reality and just realize at any point it can just absolutely stop. And these, these are just the facts. Again, it, it's much easier to warn this every single day and still go with the flow than be shocked, naive, and arrogant enough to think that again, it can't happen to you. All you need to do is look back to last Wednesday, right? Where we talked about a blow off top at the top of the range and the next day the market went down 1800 points. So again, nobody's saying technically we're in a bad place. We're actually in a great place. Again, the NASDAQ is just phenomenal. Okay, we're, we're literally a couple of days away uh, from retesting again, those 52 all time highs. But again, you just have to have in the back of your head that again, look, it's going to stop like any other rally. We talked about this last week. We had that incredible pull, uh, that 1800 pull, a 7% a move on the Dow lower that day, followed by the next day gap up and pull again. So at any point, this can happen. Again, it's much more important to be safe than sorry. Obviously have a game plan. Obviously have, a, have an opinion uh, going into the next trading session. But again, let that opinion play out. And if you feel any type of trouble, any type of stalling out in what you think is about to happen, just cut yourself off again. It's okay to have a losing trade. It's okay to have a losing day. Don't give back your month. Do not give back your, your two months. Do not give back your ear just because you're hoping to God that the market bounces back and makes you hold. It just doesn't work that way. So it's very, very important to understand that. And the most amazing part is, you know, this is what I try to warn every single day, right? We, we have a very, very aggressive game plan uh, every single day. We understand uh, that these names are super aggressive right now. I mean, this is like literally every single day. They kind of rotate into aggression. A lot, a lot of times you see a stock come out with news or get an upgrade and really start, you know, really start expanding that zone. Um, so we, we, we understand this. Okay, again, today was a you know, very, very aggressive day. Uh, but again, I, I always say uh, at Morning Strategy, look, if, you, if it feels incredibly heavy, especially uh, on the second entry, obviously for all you guys who trade uh, the PS60 theory, you know what the second entry is. If it feels heavy on the second entry, uh, more than like a minute, minute and a half after it confirms that second entry, you just get the hell out of Dodge, break even, um, you know, break even, small loss, slippage, whatever the case may be. Again, it's more important to be safe than sorry than to sit there and hope that something happens that you have no control of. So, uh, again, very, very uh, incredibly aggressive day today. Um, you know, some couple of names I was a little bit disappointed on, uh, but overall, a very, very aggressive session. Uh, Roku was uh, very, very good. Although I caught Alibaba, I thought it was going to be more, and I, and I was a little bit disappointed in Alibaba. I, I really thought it was going to be a bigger move considering uh, the option flow, considering um, you know how many days it got rejected off the same area. I was a little disappointed, but again, this is why we always talk about take money on the way up, use break even as you stop, because again, there is no guarantee. So let's talk about it. So um, the day started out, these were the initial pivots, um, and I, I really liked the upside, obviously, on caution. Uh, but again, I said, look, there's a couple of names that I do like to the downside. Um, if they do build below, they, they can drop. The first one was Boeing. And obviously, Boeing had a really, really strong session today to the upside. Uh, but I was watching this 186 level, and this is an area kind of going forward. Now, we should really watch. If you, if you see this area here, you see how Boeing keeps on holding Right, this rising, uh, rising uh, 60 minute support. It keeps on holding here in this 186. This candle's low is 186.50. Uh, today's low is 186.07. So this is the area uh, that I was watching today. Obviously, never got down there, but this is the area going forward. This 186 area. If it does confirm eventually, uh, it could get hit. I know a lot of you guys caught this upside pivot, which I did not trade, uh, but that's the area that I'm watching. Uh, Netflix again. You know, not the biggest move, but again, Netflix continues to be very, very strong. We continue to see uh, very, very good aggressive option flow in the name. Um, the last couple of days, we saw uh, the 460s, the 465s, the 470s. More important, they're buying these things 
on the dip. Again, not a big move here, okay? Uh, 451 needs to build. Uh, not a big move at all today. First move today, uh, 451. Here's a 451. Uh, it traded up like, you know, $1.70. Wasn't a big move, and then it really, really turned around and went lower. Um, you know, so again, listen, a pivot is a pivot is a pivot. Again, you don't know if, you, if you're if you gonna make a dollar or 30 cents, 80 cents, but the point is, again, guys, this is why we say, take cash flow on the way up, pay yourself for your time, and at worst case, with your balance, use break even, because again, if you don't, you know, bad things can really, really happen. So not a big move on, uh, not a big move on um, Netflix. So here's, here's obviously one of the best movers of the day here. Uh, Tesla 107, 108, obviously 1007, 108, but I'm just gonna using um, short numbers here. Uh, 107, 108 needs to build. Uh, I thought there was a shot that he gets to 120. Uh, obviously 120 or 1020 was the high from the previous channel, right? Here is the previous channel here, 120. Here is the 107, right? The 1007 area. And it exploded. It exploded, went right to this double top here to 1020. So it put up a $13 candle very, very aggressively here uh, at the open. Uh, again, good jobs for you guys, not only uh, taking the pivot, but again, understanding where if it stalled out, you needed to get the hell out of Dodge. And obviously, again, it's very, very important to sell stocks technically than to buy stocks emotionally. It's a very, very important point that unfortunately a lot of traders uh, don't understand, especially in your early stages. But again, it's a very, very expensive lesson not to understand. So uh, this again, 10, 1020, uh, 1020 will be a big, big area uh, moving forward. Again, you're still seeing really big money uh, flow on Tesla on the 1050s. These are all weeklies, 1050s, 1100s, 1120s. I even saw an 11.50. So, uh, you know, there's still betting. Maybe it runs uh, into, um, into, into Friday. Again, tomorrow is Friday, expiration. Maybe Tesla uh, wakes up. So big, big pivot there. Uh, Spotify went nuts. Uh, 207 needs to build. Um, you know, Spotify had some good option flow yesterday into the close. Uh, the two tens and this thing just went nuts. So here is the 207. Uh, Pre-market 207, it, it took that out and just, just went nuts. Absolutely went nuts. Uh, went as high as to 230, so Spotify went just absolutely nuts. Uh, Baba, you know, I was disappointed in Baba. So I get long Baba. Uh, the 225 was very important here. Um, a little disappointed, okay? So 225 was a big area here. As you can see here, it got rejected here three times, right? 225, 225, 225. So it breaks 225 and it goes to 26, okay? And you start seeing, you know, obviously it takes some off on the way up. Um, and I always use break even as my stop. But you, what, was, what was disappointing about this, this setup here, the fact that it failed, number one, we saw a buyer come in for the 230 weekly call. So you figure at 225, 230, there's a shot, right? There's always a shot to measure potential. And again, the reason why they came to the measure potential of 230, that is the upper Bollinger Band. So you started seeing, you know, you started seeing big, you know, big option flow coming in, big buyers coming in on the weeklies, and you started seeing really aggressive bids, right? 205.50s, 205.60s, and you say to yourself, well, here it goes. I mean, any second it's gonna go, any second it's gonna go, and it didn't go. Um, so I got, you know, I, I sold a bunch, I, I sold a bunch on the way up, and I got stopped at break even, and then the stock sells off $2, and it didn't recover. So it was very, very weird that you not only did you have the order flow, uh, you had the option order flow, you had really, really aggressive equity flow, buyers, you know, following it up, you had a three day channel that it finally reclaimed and it didn't work. So, uh, again, you know, again, let your worst trade in the world be one that you make money on. So that's fine. Uh, Deckers, a nice move on Deckers. Uh, here are the levels here, pre-market 200 and 201 big areas needs to build and reclaim. Uh, Deckers got upgraded today with a street high, uh, 230. So here's the 200, right? Here's the 200. Here's the 201. Uh, stock went to as high as the 205 and change. Uh, Roku, definitely the trade of the day. Uh, Roku, 119, uh, 30, 119, 50 needs to build. And here was the, you know, if you guys remember on Friday, right? It was a Monday. Hell, I don't remember what day it was. You saw these really big aggressive call buyers coming in, right? And that's when Roku went from 16 to 22, okay? And it started building pre-market and there was a channel here that 1930, 1950, that I said, look, I'm very curious if call buyers come in, this thing could really start exploding. And here is, you know, here is Roku, definitely the move of the day. Um, here is the Roku channel, right? So here's the night here, 119.30, right? 119.30. And it broke that 119.30 and started to build. And when, when I tell you there was panic buyers in the stock, there were panic buyers in the stock. We saw, we saw 125s, right? This is when the stock was at 120. 
We saw 125s, 130s, 140s, 145, 150 weeklies. For next week, we saw 150s, 170s. And then we saw the July, okay, then we saw the July $240 calls being traded. And there's a lot of open interest in that as well. So, you know, when somebody turns around and says, somebody knows something, hell, that's what it looks like. Somebody knows something. If there is something to be known about, nobody's really hiding it. The option market is telling you there's people making some really, really aggressive bets. And again, I know a lot of you guys uh, did very, very well. I caught, a, you know, I caught a decent amount of this thing as well. So, yo, it is what it is, man. That's It's a beautiful trade. Great job on Roku. Uh, Beyond never got to the 154 support. That obviously is the big number here. Uh, ZS, beautiful trade. Beautiful, beautiful trade. Uh, congratulations to you guys who caught this thing. Uh, 109.50, 110 needs to build. Uh, ZS went nuts. Okay, ZS went nuts. Here is the 109.50, 110, and the first candle uh, went to 114. It went to as high as the 115 and change. Uh, so good job there. Uh, Dada, you know, put up a 70 cent move. Uh, not a big move. It went from 22.30 to 23. Uh, Chewy, I forgot to talk. I forgot all about Chewy today. Did it do anything? 50. Did it get to 50? No, never got. Never got to 50. Uh, never got to 50. And yes, yeah, sell on the way. Uh, nice spike, Alibaba. Again, it looked great, right? Thumbs up. You know, it looked great. It was up a dollar. It looked really good. Okay, came back in. Uh, Monster ZS is a rocket. Uh, Tesla again. 1020 is the next monster pivot. You know, got rejected two times. Again, that's the number going forward. Uh, Decker's new highs. Uh, I said Netflix in case it you know comes back in. Uh, spot again, absolute monster. So the pivots were there, and I said next, like I said, 123.50 next supply. So it hit supply the 50-day moving average, and then I said, look, any close over 123.70 is macro big. I said there's a shot it goes to 128, and um, that's it. Look at it, 128, amazing move. Uh, so again, this is one to definitely watch. Uh, in the next couple of days for weakness to try to re-enter on a dip. So again, uh, going into tomorrow, guys, again, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic uh, every single day. There's definitely some good value uh, for tomorrow's session. If you are joining us tomorrow uh, be, via the live webinar, please get there 9 a.m. Eastern time. This is when we start up uh, morning strategy and the Twitter feed. Uh, starts up uh, approximately, you know, approximately a few minutes after. So guys, have a great night, everybody. Uh, God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.